Hi YouTube, 2E0 FNM back again with another video. Today I just wanted to do an update video on the UK antennas N-Fed half wave antenna. So I got a reply back from Ian and the back plate is aluminium and the bolts are galvanised steel. Um, he also said that the inside of the box is all sealed with, with hot glue. Uh, that seems to be the way that he seems to find best. You know, I think I said in the last video, I uh, hope it was waterproofed. Obviously it will be because it's better to be outside. But yeah, he's come back to me and, and that's basically an update on that. Uh, but this video was really, I wanted to change the choke. Now we had a few bit of a disaster on the way, so you'll, you'll see that. Uh, but I wanted to basically change the choke because... What I did is I just had a single piece of coax to the antenna and I just wound that same piece of coax through a toroid straight to the antenna. So I wanted to make it so it's it's isolated so I could remove the choke and replace it with a, an either a paid uh, inline choke or I could make a new choke. Because um, the, the, the coax that I'm using is that foam dielectric stuff and it migrates to the other side, uh, to the shield. So I wanted to remove that and I had a patch lead with um, that had a plastic dielectric in it so I hope that that would have been long enough to make the toroid um, and then I could put that in line and then if I wanted to change it I could, as I say I can just take the, the choke out make a new one whatever so that was what I was doing really I've also changed the configuration slightly so it goes um, a bit higher up just to sort of see if I can get my SWR a little bit better on 20 um, you know, spoiler alert, I'm still having issues, but you'll see in the video anyway and, and, and let me know what you think. Right, so that's the configuration now. So obviously I had it on this point before uh, and the angle between the very top and the, the angle for the, the vertical and the horizontal was a bit too shallow. So what I've done is I've put it up there, uh, just lassoed it up there, which has helped the SWR from what I can see on 20 meters a little touch. So it's a lot better, I think, up there, and it's out of the way. So uh, that's the first bit done. So um, that's one job to, less to do. And um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a two and a half meter length of patch lead uh, with some plugs on the end, um, and then I can use my. Um, I've got like a small patch lead. I'll show you as I do it anyway. Um, because basically, what the plan is is this is just an inline choke and it's it's very rough i just sort of did it loosely so i'm going to chop that off put a uh, a plug on the end of there proper um and then i'm going to use these ferrites with a, and make a, a choke with a patch lead uh, and then have two barrel connectors so it's like a a, a, a sing, you know a, a sort of like an inline choke with, with that i can disconnect if i wanted and then it'll be two and a half meters of coax up to the antenna there uh, so i'm going to take that plug off there obviously to do it and do a better job of the waterproofing. Uh, Ian did say that this is um, aluminium, uh, the back plate, and he also said to help the SWI if I raise that away from this plate a little bit, but I don't know if I can even do that really, but to be honest, it's, it's pretty damn good as it is. So uh, I'll, uh, that's, that's the plan. Right, so now I'm gonna make the, the toroid using those uh, before it was in line. So this this patch lead has got the foam, uh, sorry, the plastic dielectric. So it's not when it bends, it's not going to uh, migrate to the uh, to the shield. So I'm going to make make the toroid with this and then patch it into the uh, to the rest of the antenna. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get on with that. Right. So I've just checked everything there. So they're into the barrel connectors now. So all heat shrunk onto there. Um, so yeah, nice. So that's the two and a half meter patch lead done. Um, so that seems to be okay. I just need to put a plug on the other end uh, and then make the choke and uh, job's good. Right, that's the toroid made. I couldn't get uh, four turns on both sides so I, because of the size of the patch lead. So, But I'll be choking here the other end as well, but that's it there. So that's 240 by 43 material, uh, two ferrites together. So that should choke off the uh, the common mode. So I'll just put that in line barrel connector barrel connector um, and just do it like that so uh, yeah let's, let's have a look right take two on the toroid uh, it's a bit of a mess but i can't seem to get it um i can't get four turns on either side so I've, and i want to try and keep them as close to the toroid that's why i put the cable tie around it but it's the sort of best i can do i can't get another turn on there so it's got a sort of uh, well you can see what it is so i've just done what i can because um, I read somewhere that uh, it was supposed to be spaced apart uh, between and I had them all bunched together so I spaced them out a bit um, so we'll see how that works right so basically I had this choking 
now it was uneven um, now obviously I'm, I'm brand new to all this sort of stuff so I'm trying to learn a bit as I go along and I was getting ISWR on 20 um, I'm still getting ISWR on 20 so I don't know what it is it could be just the configuration but it, it seemed better earlier before I did this but this is the uh, the choke now it looks even to me um, so uh, anyway I'm going to tape up these uh, connectors and waterproof them and just leave it at that for now but this I, um, I had four rock turns on one side and three on the other side so um, apparently that, that wasn't the way to do it so I think that's balanced now so all I can do is just tidy that up uh, waterproof it and just leave it uh, and then I can take these chokes off uh, and use them upstairs on the other side um, just to sort of chop it off a bit the common mode but anyway I'm just everything seems all right but I'm just getting ISWR on 20 megs uh, 20 megs yeah so uh, for 20 meters sorry everything else seems fine so it could just be the way the antenna is but I'll keep any any anyone any comments just let me know in the you know write a comment of what it could be or what I could change um, but it, it probably could just be the the configuration because all the other bands are perfect SWR it's just 20 um 20 meters but it's not high it's about 1.8 so it's, it's higher than it should be right i just want to do a, a summarization now of what i've done so it's been a couple of days since i've filmed the other parts of the video so uh, what i've basically done is i've moved the antenna from this point here because it used to uh, go up and then to here so what i've done is i've raised it up onto that there's the insulator so that's the end for 80 meters there's the 80 meter coil and then it goes up so there's a bit of a you know it goes up and then a bit of a droop down there and then that's sort of like a bit more horizontal so that's what I've done on that side um, and then to have a look at the choke so this is my uh, updated choke now so uh, it, it's better now I've got equal turns on either side now apparently uh, <laughs> four turns on one side and three on the other is, is unbalanced and that's not going to be good uh, but as I say I'm learning all the time um, so that's that's in there now and it's still using the foam dielectric and then coax a bit naff coax really um, but I have um, put the barrel connectors in it so what I can do is uh, you know I can either I can take these parts out so I can remove the choke uh, and then I can either buy a line insulator to go in place or I can make another choke with another spare bit of coax if it migrates and then uh, on this side so that's the uh, antenna part there and then we've got two and a half meters basically to the uh, end fed half wave so i've just got two meters coming up to here so i've done a bit better job of the uh, the amalgamating tape um so yeah really really impressed uh, i'm still getting high swr on 20 meters so i don't really know what that is um so anybody i'm guessing it's my configuration um so my other plan was um because obviously going up from there i've got 12 meters going up and then it's got to go across to the house so my other option was to put the transformer somewhere here go across that way and then up and then across so it'd be a bit of a strange strange way of doing it but um you know i'd say it's a couple of meters or so there so if i could put it here go across then up and then across it might uh, might do it so uh, so what i'm saying the only thing i've noticed really is the uh, SWR on 20 meters is still high it's about 1.9 to 1 um, it did seem better when it came down to here so it kind of went up and straight down here it did seem better but it was just a bit close to the house because obviously the uh, when it was pulled down the uh, insulator was sort of about here so it's quite close whereas now I've got it quite far away and obviously for 20, 40, 15, 10 all that is is not you know the, the coil's not seen there but on 80 it uses the coil the rest of the antenna and this little part there so um yeah it works fantastic everywhere apart from 20 meters so that's uh, that's the update for it yeah so i'll just show you now what the swr is like um so let me just get um do this so that this is basically what the swr i'm getting uh, on 20 meters so i'll just take the tuner out so it's about 1.9, 2 to 1-ish on, on 20 meters. Um, and then if I show you 
on um, 80 meters so sort of about where we want to go take the tuner out so that's sort of pretty much all right and, it, and it, the tuner will take it in between 700 and 800 where I want it to be so that that's okay there um, and then on on seven megs um, let me just yeah it, it's basically fine on 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 uh, 40 meters um, it will tune on 18 so uh, the antenna is not supposed to work on on uh, I don't, I don't know if it's supposed to work but it's uh, it's not advertised as working on these bands so um, yeah I'm not really sure um, but it, it would it, it's obviously high SWR but it will tune it I can't so I can use those bands I can tune them so um, let's have a look at um, 21 megs 15 meters I didn't show you that in the old video so that's good SWR that's that's fine uh, it's about 1.5 to 1 on 15 meters and uh, obviously 10 meters is, is fine as well so it's just 20 meters I'm struggling with a little bit um, so yeah if anyone knows in the comments and obviously um, it works on 6 meters as well so if I take the uh, the tuner out um, it's obviously high but it's not meant to work here but I can tune it you know it will it will tune up you know so it will actually tune on on, on 6 meters So it, it is, you know, and I, it's. I've not heard anything on it yet, but I, I think it's one of those sorts of bands where you're not always uh, guaranteed stuff. But it's just basically um, 20 meters is just a bit high, but it's still usable, and I've still had loads of contacts on it, so it's it, it's absolutely fine. But I just, I'm guessing it's the configuration of the antenna. So thank you very much for watching. I really, really hope that was a bit more insight into how I've got my NFED antenna. As I say, I think I need to, there's still work to do. I mean, 20 meters is totally usable. I've got all over the place on it, but uh, obviously, it, with the high SWR, it, it's obviously it's not happy 100%. So I need to readdress that sometime. Uh, but for now, it works perfectly. I've had no issues whatsoever. I had a bit of an RFI issue when the antenna was quite close to the house on 80 meters. None of the others, but obviously on 80 is the bit that's closest to the house. And I mean. When I say RFI issues, I mean the slightest issues. We have one of those Google Home devices, and it just lit up randomly when I was tr when I was transmitting on 80 uh, for a brief second and went. Uh, as I say, I only use 50 watts anyway, so uh, it was just that one thing I noticed, and that was when it was at its closest to the house. So since I've moved it slightly further away, no issues whatsoever. So I need to come up with a different plan, I think. Uh, but for now, I've worked all over the place with it, absolutely blown away. A really, really good antenna. So I hope that was a bit more insight. As I say, leave a comment, let me know what you think. How would you do it in my garden space? As I say, it's 10 metres, so it's 30 foot by 15 foot garden. So I'm not exactly sure how the best way to do it is. Uh, but as I say, I'm learning all the time. I'm quite new to HF, so I've got loads to learn. Uh, but if you haven't already, uh, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be doing an unboxing video and review of the 7300. That's going to be coming up probably next. Uh, I've got some old CBs to look at and loads of, loads of cool stuff like that. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel uh, massively. So does a big thumbs up if you like the video or a thumbs down if you don't. But uh, I appreciate everybody's feedback. Um, so yeah, please leave a comment. How do you, you know, what antennas do you use? Um, how do you support your antennas? What would you do in my situation? Um, as I say, a total beginning to HF really, so but loving every second of it. So thank you very much for watching. I've been 2E0 FNM. You've been very kind to watch 7-3.